One of our favorite third-party Android keyboards received a major update today as a public beta. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and this is a walkthrough of the layouts for living SwiftKey beta. Today, an update for one of the most popular third-party Android keyboards, SwiftKey, was released in the form of a public beta. Dubbed Layouts for Living, the version number is 4.3, and what this beta build brings is quite fantastic, useful, intriguing, and a long list of other positive adjectives. At the surface, it would seem little has changed. It's still the same old SwiftKey as before. Even digging through the settings, you'll only find features that have been there for several versions now, such as flow, the gesture style typing capability, themes, the ability to add a row of very helpful navigation arrows, and cloud support, the ability to back up your saved words and personalize your experience from various services and social accounts. Even opening the keyboard from within any text field doesn't immediately show any dead giveaways. So what is new about this version of SwiftKey? First, in response to never-ending requests, the developers have consolidated the tablet and smartphone support into a single application. Certainly a welcome change. But that's not the meat of this update. Long press the numeric key or the SwiftKey menu key, and it will bring up a settings menu, which would normally give you a shortcut to SwiftKey settings, voice input, support, and the ability to share the SwiftKey keyboard to a number of places. In this beta, long pressing the symbol key brings up several more options. For instance, there is now a shortcut to themes from within this pop-up menu. SwiftKey has also added two new layout choices, a split thumb keyboard and a side-mounted compact keyboard, not unlike Samsung's one-handed keyboard. Whether you like the thumb keyboard, compact, or full-size keyboards, you now have the ability to resize each of them, five different sizes to be exact. In the full and thumb keyboards, resizing only adjusts the height of the keys. In the compact layout, however, resizing changes both the width and height of the keys. And there's one more particularly awesome feature, the ability to undock the keyboard, regardless of which layout you choose. The full keyboard when undocked can be moved vertically along the display. The split layout divides into two separate keyboards, which can be moved together or apart. And the compact keyboard can be placed virtually anywhere on the display moving in two different dimensions. To redock the keyboard, simply drag it back down towards the bottom of the display. The whole point of this update was to cater to varying sizes of smartphones and tablets. Who says you have to use a keyboard any certain way? With this layouts of living beta, you can use the keyboard in the way which suits you best. For instance, a floating keyboard is very helpful on a larger smartphone, like the One Max, and especially the Galaxy Note 3 with its multi-window and pin window features. As I noted in my review of the Note 3, the floating keyboard is something I've grown quite fond of and use frequently. The ability to use that feature in SwiftKey on any Android device is certainly welcomed though I do wish the keyboard would stay undocked. Unfortunately, it redocks every time the keyboard is minimized. You can try the SwiftKey 4.3 beta yourself today if you'd like. Simply visit the SwiftKey blog, linked in the description below, download the keyboard, install it, and go through the SwiftKey setup process as usual. That's all we have time for, so if you enjoyed the video, let us know by clicking the thumbs up button below and subscribe to the channel for more updates and videos like this one. Be sure to follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Google+, and Facebook at Pocket Now. You can find me on Twitter at Casper Tech. I'm Taylor Martin, and I will see you next time.